Today, autism is widely known in various places across the globe. It wasn't always this way, however. There was a time when people knew very little about autism. That changed when a certain autistic lady hit the scene. Temple Grandin was born in Boston, Massachusetts on August 29, 1947. She received her autism diagnosis in 1950, but since very little was known about the disorder at that point in time, it was widely considered to be minimal brain damage. The medical experts back then recommended to Temple's mother, Eustacia Cutler, to place her child in an institution. You can probably guess how well that piece of advice went. Eustacia was resolved to take care of Temple herself and give her the best life possible, which certainly wasn't going to be easy. Miss Cutler had to combine raising a special child, doing research on getting the best care and instruction for Temple, dealing with a terrible husband, and judgment from people outside who just didn't understand. That's a tall order for any mother to take on. Nevertheless, Eustacia taught her little girl what she needed to know about the fundamental social skills in order to bring her into the social world. As might be expected, Temple still had to deal with some challenges of her own, such as communicating with other people and, you guessed it, bullying. In fact, when she was in ninth grade, Temple was kicked out of a high school for throwing a book at a bully who was calling her different kinds of names. Imagine, if only that bully could see where Temple Grandin is now. But more on the future later. Around the time she was getting into a special boarding school, Temple spent a lot of time at her aunt's ranch to tend the horses. Temple loved it there because it was one of the few places where she wasn't bullied and teased. Moreover, she started to make friends who had similar interests, and that would eventually cement into her mind the importance of finding friends with shared interest. Thanks to this experience, she started to grow into her own person and think about what she wanted to do with her life. After Temple Grandin graduated high school, she attended college to earn her bachelor's degree in psychology in 1970 from the formerly known Franklin Pierce College, which is now a university. Five years later, Grandin received her master's degree from Arizona State University and a doctorate in 1989 from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, both of those degrees being in animal science. You may have noticed a leap in time between Temple's master's degree and her doctorate. That's because she was working on other things in those years. During the 1980s, Temple began to speak publicly about her life with autism at the request of one of the founders of the Autism Society of America. This was a good start for getting her name out in the world and becoming more acquainted with the autistic community and advocacy groups. But it wasn't until December 27, 1993 that she truly started to appear on the map. Around this point, Temple Grandin met with the late neurologist and author Oliver Sacks, and together they worked on an article to be featured in the New Yorker magazine titled An Anthropologist on Mars, a name that was derived from Temple's description of her experience with social settings how she had to study other people around her like an anthropologist to gain a better understanding. This title would appear again in 1995 in a fully published book, featuring seven different stories of people with neurological conditions, including Temple Grandin's story. Now communities across North America know who Temple Grandin is, but sharing her autistic journey was not her only contribution. To this present day, Grandin serves as a professor at Colorado State University on animal science. In addition to being a consultant for big companies that nurture cattle, in terms of their handling equipment design and improving the overall quality of life for the cattle, there is one particular piece of equipment she helped make that stands out, because the idea revolves around not only cows, but autistic people as well. When she was diving into animal science, Temple began to notice some things about cows that sounded quite familiar to her. As a whole, cows are herd animals that like to be in groups, 
they are aware of small sensory details in the environment, and when they are stressed, they get close to other cows to get just the right amount of pressure to help calm them down. Similar to what Temple Grandin and other autistic people go through. With that in mind, Temple got to work on an improved version of a cattle chute that she found in her aunt's ranch. Originally, she made a similar device for herself back in high school after being encouraged by her science teacher, William Carlock, to control the tactile sensations and help her get more comfortable with touch and being closer to people. Now with what Grandin knew about animal science, she was able to apply the same principles to cows with her new version of the cattle chute. It is a major success that is still being used to this day. Ranchers and cattle caretakers are thankful for this invention, as it has made caring for their cattle not only easier, but much safer for the people and the animals. Over the course of her life, Temple Grandin has made many accomplishments, including publishing several books, appeared in some sessions of TED Talks, had a movie made about her story in 2010, along with so many others that unfortunately we can't fit into this one video. What we can say though is that Temple Grandin is one of the most well-known autistic people for a reason. The term autism was around longer than Temple, but she was able to open people's eyes to what that word really meant. If she didn't share her story when she did, who knows how autism would have been perceived now. Temple serves as a shining symbol for how great autism can be for our generations and future generations to come.